back for what's about to be the second half of today's game. Chicago versus Case Western. The Maroons trailing by one, had a good finish to the first half uh, that saw them come back most of the way from their biggest deficit of the game at six. And now seeing what develops here in the second half. By the way, I just want to remind you that you can email us at gomaroons at gmail.com. Love to hear that you're out there and watching today. Of course, this production by Maroon TV and all the great work that the students do here. Some shout outs from the stands to viewers at home. Uh, the Willemos wanted to send a shout out to the Simpsons, Bill and, and Carrie, as well as, um, as, well as uh, Frank McGuera who's out there I know in Boise, Idaho. So love having you out there watching and excited for the second half here, which will be inbounded by Case. Both teams with their starting lineups on the court. It's Iacono, uh, <clears throat> goes inside. No good by Eppard. And Chicago battling for the board, it'll be Maroon's ball. <laughs> Devaney for Chicago, handling the one, seeking out her option in the backcourt, and too long of a pass, it was intercepted by Case and then a accidental trip by Womack. Of, of the thief herself, five police. That pass is just a little too telegraph from Devaney. Case player read it very well. It seemed like Devaney might have stopped a little bit earlier than she should have. She was in the backcourt by mm -hmm. a few feet. It was almost look like she was looking for some extra help to uh, get past half court, but came a little late. The hook by Eppard will put her team up by three. 19 minutes left to play in the second. Devaney rolls it to Moore. Griner over to McGarrah. Holding the ball high above her head and Ooh. finding Griner making the run off the ball, but out of her hands, and it'll be Spartans to take it. A little unlucky there. It was a really nice cut, almost a fantastic play. Clearly designed in practice play. A kind of longer distance roll for Griner off of Megara. Miles inside the foul stripe, good. Womack for the Maroons in the front court. Chicago trailing by five. Fancy dribbling on the baseline. It's now with Moore. McGarra. Griner up top. Finds Womack on the right side. Devaney occupies the block as Womack goes down to it. Skips it back out. Devaney hits it. <laughs> with her first points of the game to go along with a couple of rebounds. 37-35, case up by two. The uh, option not taken there by Eppard. It goes inside to Muller. Back up to Eppard. Left side eye fleets. Back into her left hand. Comes to a stop because of Womack. Six seconds left on the shot clock. Mm -hmm. Ifly stumbling back, goes down to Muller. Turn around, no good. Devaney over to McGarra as Chicago looking to take this one level or better. Inside to Devaney, five blue shirts around her and knocked out of her hands. The Spartans long drive by Icono in and out couple of those. Now McGuera will have the rebound and find Womack. Devaney, no one down there, down low, so she's going to take all that space, but was short on the fadeaway hook. Now, the quick outlet on the other end, and a charge. No, a walk uh, against Eppard, really thrown off by the defense by Moore. Yeah, Case is always eager to Get out and transition quickly. There it comes back to 
to bite him and uh, couldn't quite get control of her body and, and traveled. Two point game, Chicago puts on Willemo for Magera. Womack, high off the left side. Lobbed in to Devaney, good. Moore to Devaney, a lovely play as Case continues to really front on their posts and defend them high up in the post. And Chicago a few times has been able to take advantage of that with the high low. Yeah, very nice, simple play. Great pass and a good finish. Griner with the block, but it wound up still with the Spartans. Mummy hit the mid-range baseline jumper. Two-point game once again. 16 minutes left to play in the second. Devaney. Defended tightly by I Felice. Willemo lobbed in. High low again to Moore. Waits for it and will head to the line. Chicago's done a great job of getting to the line tonight. And they've been shooting pretty well. First free throw. Cuts the deficit in the half what she comes up with here in the second and it's going to be a tying free throw shot. 39-39 with 16 left to play in the second. Inside to Muller. Kept out well by Griner and a foul by the Maroons post. second. Muller checks off for Case. And the Spartans now with a quick inbounds. A shot by Reynolds hit for three. Willemo coast to coast into some trouble and got the deflection. Perhaps intentionally to bail herself out. Murray now on for Griner who has those two fouls. Girl's only other player with two fouls is Magera. Right side is Lilamo. Up to Moore, into Devaney. Backing down and a charge. That'll be Devaney's first foul, team's third. So Chicago picking up a couple in a row. Down low, the hook with the right hand, good by Mummy. Forty-four, thirty-nine. Spartans once again gaining a five-point lead in the second half. Chicago's been able to bat them back down from there a few times so far. Murray, right baseline, up to Willemo. It's going to go to Devaney. You can see the zone working for Case. Into Murray, dodging away through Willemo for three, off the front of the rim, Womack, yes! Wow. Really nice play there from Womack, and even as a freshman, you can see how her confidence has grown throughout the season. Out of her cloak and to the offensive rebound and bucket, now Chicago again, Willemo, one touch to Womack, blocked cleanly. And it's gonna be picked up by Ayakano. Had the block, then drew the foul, and Iacono now is going to get a technical, getting in the face of Womack right in front of the referee. Not a smart move. I mean, literally right in front of him after drawing the foul. So Chicago will have the shot as well as the ball. to shoot the free throw. Willemo was the one who picked up the foul for the Maroons, her second. It's the first free throw and now the second off the technical. Good. So for a team like the Spartans that you've seen 
has put so much kind of pressure and importance on this game. Uh, a lapse in judgment, and now Iacono will be checked off for the Spartans. And that's one of the things when you play a style like Case does, you know, you, you've that high energy, sometimes you can get emotional. I think that was an emotional mistake there from Iacono. Um. Orcutt then is going to lose her dribble on the left side, being defended by Magera. Chicago now with the opportunity to overlap Case. They trail by one with 14 minutes left in the second. Shaw, Donovan, now Womack. For three. No good. Rebounded by Mummy. Mooney is going to find on the left side Orca. I have police now. Quickly in. Mooney, good. Two, Mooney. Strong answer there by a number of bench players for Case. 46-43, Spartans up by the tray. Magera on the weak side, into Murray. High post, goes to Womack. To the baseline, stopped well. Murray now blocked at the elbow, and it will be caught by the Spartans. High police. Veering her way around, gonna tuck it in. Or cut, back out. Mummy hit it. Even with a hand in her face, she drained that. It was a nice shot from the case, case player. So the Spartans recover well. They lead by five once again. 12.40 left in the second. Into Murray, two players on her. Trying to find Shaw overlapping her, who's fouled. Call against Orcutt. She picks up her second and the team's third. Runes take off Murray. Oh, pardon me, not Murray, but oh yeah, it was Murray, I think, for, for Griner. Chicago on the inbounds and able to convert, and then Donovan is gonna at least slow things up on the fast break for Case. Pretty fresh 25 seconds on the shot clock for the Spartans. Orcutt goes in to Reynolds. The big pivot, couldn't reach it. And it'll be Chicago ball. Twelve twenty left in the second half. 48, 43 Spartans. Looking is Case to get themselves further in the UAA picture, which gets muddier with every week. Magera here will head to the line on the shooting foul. Personal foul fouled by Aya Police, who picked up her second. By the way, an update in overtime from NYU. Rochester holding off the Violets, 57-54. So they will find themselves still in a tie with Emory at 7-1 and one at the lead of the conference. Wash U looks well on their way to showing them by just one at 6-2, and two. so even more of a must win for the Spartans here to keep within at least a couple games of the lead. Yeah, they've got a lot to play for. Um, it, that, that's part of how they keep up that uh, high energy, I think. I mean, as I was saying earlier, it's it's amazing that they're able to play with this uh, enthusiasm for the entire game. I have Felice, so good burst of enthusiasm there on the drive. Puts her team back up by five after Chicago had gotten a couple at the free throw line. Griner in the right corner, up to Willemo. Still using the strong side, Devaney. Griner, 15 seconds on the shot clock. Griner dribbling up the perimeter. Donovan now gets it through Devaney, batted away, but it will be Chicago ball with nine seconds on the shot clock. Moore will replace Shaw. Willemo switched over to Devaney. Spinning around, ball on the floor, player on the floor, and it will be Spartan ball. A timeout is 
what keeps the possession on their side. Fourth used of six, Chicago still with all six in their, their pocket. 11-20 left in the second, 50 to 45, Spartans. This case team is a very, very interesting team. As I've harped on throughout the game, they always bring that energy, but they sort of, they're, they're hot and cold with their decision making, their uh, shot selection. Um, sometimes they're right on and sometimes they make some plays that you wonder as to why they, they chose that. The effort is always there, no doubt, but sometimes you, you wonder uh, what's going through their heads, but they've had some very strong defensive stands recently. It's a senior heavy uh, lineup, especially in the starting lineup, four of their five players, seniors, all but Muller, or pardon me, all but Eppard. Muller, uh, Miles, Aya Felice, and Aya Kano, who uh, with Aya Kano and Aya Felice, a couple of us during halftime were remarking how seems like they've been playing for seven, eight years. And certainly they've done a lot of damage today for their side. That ball gets through, but it's going to be a travel by Mooney. Not much she could do. It kind of just wound up in her hands. Yeah, I think she was surprised that all of a sudden she came into possession of the ball. Looked like it was through a deflection. Just kind of happily found her way into her hands. Devaney. Bouncing into the middle, into some trouble. Tough pass. And it'll be Case taking it away. Skipped over to the left side. Orcutt goes up to Miles. Now on the right side, Reynolds. Inside to Orcutt. Off the glass, but no good. Rebound by Devaney. Dribbling with her left hand, and from right to left now, Griner. Finds Moore, quickly looks to the right side. Willemo lobs it in out of the reach of Griner. Chicago bringing on Womack and McGarra. They replace Donovan and Willemo. Chicago back to their starting lineup. The Spartans have Iacono, who was out for a few minutes after the technical foul. Now having replaced Reynolds. Miles off the right wing. Down to the baseline, turnaround by Muller, no good. Rebounded by Griner, good box out by her. Womack now in the front court, letting her players overlap her. Switch to the right side by McGarra. Moore through a deflection and it's intercepted by Aya Police. Now on the other end, Iacono down low and it'll be a foul against Griner, at least preventing the easy bucket. Yeah, I think that's back-to-back -back possessions for you, Chicago, with that have ended in a turnover. As we said, they've done a lot better job this game, but coming into these last 10 minutes of the game, they definitely have to watch out for that, limit those turnovers if they're going to get back into the game. Well, they had been really doing better pace of the second half has picked up considerably. In the first mm -hmm. half, just nine turnovers, just as many as Case had committed. But in the first 10 and a half minutes of the second half, Chicago with eight turnovers. Uh, yep. And a few of those have been on course. Yeah, absolutely. Chicago just has to be patient. They have to make good decisions. They've been trying to force a few tough passes. They need to uh, be just take care of the ball. and. They have to realize that Case has a lot to play for. They're going to be all over them defensively. They have to be patient. They have to be composed and, and just get the good shot. High percentage shots. Chicago's done a good job on the rebounding end. Have kind of maintained a good even to, uh, to arm's length advantage on that end. Six offensive rebounds, 27 to 22 overall on that front. Chicago has called this timeout, by the way. Their first used of six. Case has already burned four of their six. Mention now the Spartans are a senior heavy team and some players that have been, uh, I believe, four year starters for them Iacono, Aya Police. You know, and when it comes to Iacono, the, the program's third uh, all time scoring leader with 1,232 points for a career. That in wow. three and you know two thirds of a season. So uh, really an opportunity for them here this season 
They are the dark horse in the league, but uh, the season for everything to go right for them and to really kind of make a move in the conference. Yeah, there's something to be said for having a, a senior heavy lineup for these girls. It's really the their last dance, so to speak. So that adds a lot more pressure, a lot more desire to get those those wins. And the team having a real identity of those seniors. The open to Womack, busting the zone. That was a great and pass. And it back down within four. Nine and a half minutes left in the second. Iacono driving too strong on the glass and rebounded by Murray. Magera trying to pick out on the long end, Womack, but it was well covered by Mooney. She had a great pass on the play before that, but that's what I was talking about. You gotta be a little more patient there, not force some of those tough passes. But here, Devaney forcing the turnover, deflecting the skip pass into the hands of Moore. Womack on the left side. We're under nine minutes left in the second and a four point deficit for the Moons. McGarrett for three. Rattles around, doesn't fall. Eye of Police with the rebound. Now the long pass and a foul against Murray. Trying to catch up and get into position against Muller who heads to the line to shoot two. But though the last shot didn't fall, that one may be a better example of picking out a good shot for Chicago. Yep. Magera at the point just head off the rim. And we were wondering how Case was going to be able to sustain the energy. And if anything, it's it's increased in this second half. Faster paced game. I think Chicago is still trying to adjust to that, as we were saying earlier. Murray's first foul. Team six. Only one of two free throws hit. It's 52 47. Eight and a half left in the second. Devaney. Looking for options, she's gonna go to the far side, kind of lobbed it over to Womack. I'm sure it got there, Womack enters and then retreats. McGarra got the push as she received the ball. It's gonna be a foul against Mooney. Her first. Team's fifth. Two players for Case with three fouls. That's Moeller and Iacono. They've been in trouble the whole game. Womack for three. Good! Big shot from Womack, and we've been saying this throughout the season. When With all these injuries, these young players are getting such a great opportunity to get some very serious minutes in big-time situations, and building that confidence which will serve them well throughout this season and in the seasons to come. Offensive off the ball fall called against Muller. Her fourth now with eight minutes left to play. A real big one and a considerably unnecessary one off the ball. Yeah, with that many fouls, you got to be careful. Unnecessary foul there. That could definitely change the course of the game. And for the Chicago Post, who are undersized and with some players playing out of position, an opportunity for them to play up even stronger against a player like that, mm -hmm. knowing that she's gonna have to be a little tentative. McGarrett the drive, in and out, and oh. out. Devaney now is fouled. Aya Police picks up her third. And Chicago will now be in the bonus. Shooting one and one is Devaney. Big free throw advantage over the course of the game. They've hit 14 of their 17 free throw attempts while Case just three of five from the line. Front end missed, rebounded by Case. Missed opportunity and it remains a two point deficit. Orcut for three, open on it. Couldn't hit it though. Battling for it, somehow the one blue shirt in the sea of white, Eppard, will head to the line herself for one on one on the first of the bonus. Moore called for her first. And a second shot scored, or pardon me, earned by Eppard. The 
back in. Let's push with the right hand off the back of the iron. Rebounded by Moore, finds Devaney, dodges around trouble, finds Womack, waits for it, and then blocked cleanly. A rebound by Orca. It's kind of a high risk, high reward sort of pace the Maroons are trying to play there. It's worked several times here. McGarry's gonna clip a ball out for Spartan's possession. Yeah, that's sort of been the style that's defined this whole game on both sides, high risk, high reward. Both teams flying at each other. Sometimes those shots are dropping and sometimes you wonder if that was really the best option. Aya Felice off the mark, or pardon me, that was Aya Kano off the mark. Remains a three point game. Shaw high up in the post, Devaney down the left of the lane, look for more for three. Off the front of the rim, battle for it on the floor. No timeout called yet. And it will be a jump ball that remains with Chicago. Good job by the Spartans, and I believe that was Orca to get on the floor, but with just two timeouts left in the Spartans' pocket, they couldn't really burn another there. The inbounds, a little sloppy, but bailed out by the foul from Orca. She wasn't really looking at the ball there, and I think the referee just kind of was going to call it if she made any contact. Yeah, co close play there though for Chicago. Almost led to two the other way. They've got to be careful with that. We got a close game here and every possession counts. Orcutt's third. So to update the foul situation, Orcutt and Aya Felice, as well as Icono with three for the Spartans, four for Mueller. Chicago only has three with Griner. Moore hits the first free throw. Chicago made a few substitutions. They have Willemo and Donovan now on. Moore at the line. Shaw and Womack at the blocks. And Moore hits the second free throw to draw the Maroons within one. High place. Left index finger in the air. Goes down low to Orcutt. Too strong with the left hand. Battling for her own board though. Moore ends up with it. Takes a shot and then finds her teammate to get out. Womack down to Shaw, puts it up, too strong, and Iacono on the other end. I fleece the three, doesn't fall. And now Moore slowing things up ever so slightly, but that was just for the briefest bit as Womack starts up to Shaw. Left side now Donovan, faked it down low, instead goes up to Moore up top as the guards switch. Womack. Down low, and we'll head to the line for two. And a great opportunity here. They've been flirting with the ties. They've been flirting with the lead a lot of this game, but now a real opportunity they need to take advantage of. Yeah, a great chance here. A nice drive from Womack, drew the contact. And as you said, here's a, here's a chance to retake that lead. And Womack brings the level. Six minutes left in the second. Murray and Griner check on for Shaw and Moore. Case took off Orca, who picked up her fourth foul. Now two players, two posts with four fouls for the Spartans. Real danger being presented for them on that front as Muller with four and Orca with four. Fifty-four, fifty-three. Chicago with the lead. Their first lead since five minutes into the first half. Ayakano working her way through. Just when she beat one, had another to beat. Essentially did as she had to the line to shoot two. Willemo with her third. Iacono hits the first. She averages 18 points and five rebounds per game, does Heavy Iacono. This game, just seven points, three of 10 shooting, has five rebounds, two assists, three fouls. She certainly does a lot on the court. Also has a couple of steals and a block. It just hasn't been her typical offensive performance with a, a fair amount of credit to the, the Maroons defense, but uh, on other parts, it just hasn't been her night shooting, I think, overall. Yeah, obviously a great player, but U Chicago has done a great job tonight on both ends of the court. And you got to like their chances right now, where they, I feel like they've got the momentum. 
They've fought back. They've had the lead. It's, it's a close game, but they really don't have anyone in foul trouble. They got four timeouts left. I mean, they're playing very well, and, and they're in a good position. So that's all you can ask for at this point. We should have an exciting final five and a half minutes. Erica Aya Felice really is having a great game for the Spartans, which has been a pretty balanced performance overall. You know, if you look at her points per game, rebound per game averages, you'd think she's kind of way down the, the chart when it comes to kind of go-to players on this team, but really not so. You see that watching, but today has played 34 of 34 and a half minutes. Not sure uh, what the rounding is there and how many seconds she's exactly missed. She has 10 points and seven steals on this game. Very impressive performance right there. Coming out of the timeout, called by the Chicago bench. It'll be a second shot for Iacono. Game tied at 54, five and a half left to play. Uh, Yelp from the crowd. Presumably enough to throw off Iacono's second free throw. Donovan around the surging Aya Police. McGarrah up to Womack. Around the screen, Womack the strong oh. drive, but just short, and the rebound by the Spartans. Really hard contact on the screen and a great drive. Womack just lacked the finish. Left side now, Mooney. Down to Iacono, back to yep. the inside, and she took one too many. Five minutes now left in the second half in a tie game. What a game we've had here today. Down to Murray, caught it, was being fronted, and will head to the line. Murray looking for her first points of the game. She does have three rebounds so far. For Chicago, their scoring attack has been a little bit less balanced than the Spartans, but not, not really severely so. Womack is the game's leader with 15 points and five, 12, five of 12 shooting, also four rebounds and two assists. Nine points for Caitlin Moore, and then it's seven on, on down and a really balanced effort through the bench for the Maroons. Murray hits the pair. Two point lead by Chicago, matches their largest of the game set in the first half. Right side, Iacono on the baseline, pulled up and hit it. Clutch shot as we get to the last rounds of it. Donovan spinning her way through somehow and will head to the line. It really has been an exciting game all night. It looks like we're going to have a great finish here. Looking forward to it. The uh, It's been very fast paced, but both teams have fought hard and, and it looks like it'll come down to the wire. The fifth fall called against Muller and now and now Muller saying it wasn't her that committed the foul. It looked like there might have been a couple players against or around Donovan and Case is pleading the case so to speak, apologize mm -hmm. th that uh, it was not Muller but it was someone else who had committed the foul. The referee just clarifying no, it wasn't a mistake. He specifically saw the senior center commit her fifth. Big call there. Definitely can change the course of the game. So we'll see, presumably, a lot of uh, Orca down low as well as Eppard staying on. Mummy also on the box the first year. It's going to get some minutes here. The 5 foot 11 first year. Donovan hits the first free throw, puts her team back up by one. 4.23 left in the second. And now a two-point lead is Donovan replaced by Devaney. On the right side, it's Iacono. Looking up as she dribbles low, finds Aya Police. Iacono now switching to the left side. Into the middle, into trouble, so she skipped it out for three. Aya Police 
One of her rare misses, but then the offensive board and the fadeaway by Ayakano to tie it. Yeah, that was an impressive play there from Ayakano falling away from the basket, gets enough power and accuracy to get it to, to drop. And now the turnover intercepted by Eppert to do it herself with the layup. Two point lead back to the Spartans. Three and a half minutes left in the second. Griner handling the ball now. Pinned up by Mummy, and it's going to be a timeout call by the Chicago bench. Not the situation they wanted to find themselves in. 60 to 58, we've been talking about how Aya Police has picked up some of the scoring responsibility that Ayakano just hasn't been able to do in her typical rate uh, here tonight. But there, when Aya Police missed the three, it was Ayakano winding up with the offensive board and then just putting it right back up. Outstanding individual effort. Yeah, that's why Case is such a strong team, a formidable opponent. Even when one of your top players doesn't have it one night, you've got other players that can step up whether it's offensively, defensively, and so, and when you bring the, the effort that they do every night, it's always gonna be a tough matchup. For Case, the implications of this one will be if they can hold off the Maroons with three and a half left to play and a two point lead, they'll uh, be still one game back of Wash U for third place. They'll be in fourth place on their own at five and three. Wash U looks well on their way to the win and a 6-2 record, but of course, it's a Chicago-St. Louis swing for Case and uh, Carnegie, and so Case will have the opportunity to go follow up and prove what they did last week was for real uh, and really put themselves in, in the mix, so uh, two tough tasks here, two really tough places to play, but uh, you imagine the importance of it hasn't escaped them. Three and a half minutes left here in the second. Moore to Megara. Thought about the shot. Four went it. At the right elbow. Found Moore for three. Short. And the rebound by Case. The foul by the Maroons. Griner will pick up her fourth and send Case up the court for the last of the bonus. Eppard the one to shoot, she had the rebound. More shots seem to be thrown off by the close defense of her man as the front end missed by Eppard, a big break for the Maroons. Still over three minutes left to play in the second. They do trail by two. Womack behind the back dribble, lovely stuff to McGarrett for three. No good. Now the quick start by Aya Police saved in by Orchid and Case able to maintain the possession. Orchid high off the right wing, 15 seconds on the shot clock, 2.45 on the game clock. Ayakano resets, eight seconds now, take the three around the screen and hit it. Womack got trapped in the screen. Yeah, cold-blooded three right there. It's a big shot for Case and U Chicago is going to have to be very careful with these next possessions. Each one counts. They got to get some buckets and, and a stop or two. Familiar territory, however, for the Maroons. Down by five and really battled back several times from this point. Down to Devaney. At the right block. Into some trouble. The deflection into the hands of Iacono. A two on one now. Moore, the last defender. And Iacono missed it. But it will be Case Ball. Fresh shot clock, it is gonna be, of course, crucial here, down by five to get a stop. Yeah, absolutely, and when you get that stop, if it comes, obviously you gotta take care of the basketball on the other end. Case now really at the point where they'll use up the shot clock. Two minutes left and 20 seconds on the shot clock. Chicago, of course, checked off Griner with her four, four fouls. So they have Murray on for the defense. It's on the left side, 10 seconds on the shot clock now. Eppard posting in. Goes back up top, Icono has to corral. Three seconds, got out of the reach of McGarra, floats it up, missed it, rebound by Murray. Strips it away and is gonna find Devaney. Big stop there with a minute and a half left to play. 
Devaney seeking out her options, has looked at every one. Still dribbling the ball around the screen, down the left of the lane, skips it out to Moore for three. In and out oh. and in, yes! Shades of last Sunday in the huge shot hit by Moore. That high arcer, heart and mouth stuff, and the Maroons within two. Ayakano wants to do it herself, off the mark, but Orca, what a job getting in. Now a 21 second difference between shot clock and game clock, and the game clock at 45. So Chicago once again needing to drill down and get a stop. The next foul would put Case in the double bonus. Down low, posting up, no good from a mummy, and it will be Case ball. And the referee's now talking. Chicago's. Looks of disbelief from the case bench. Moments after, we saw the same from the Chicago bench. But a break goes the Maroons' way. I didn't have a good look at it. I can't We don't. We don't long. have a, a good vantage point, but we'll just say that they got it right. It was, it was really 50-50 stuff, and you'd have to, of course, be right on the spot to, to know. It's 63-61, 32 seconds left on the game clock, and a full 30 on the shot clock. We're going to have an exciting finish here at the Ratner Athletic Center, Kyle. Absolutely. That's what I was hoping for all game. Hopefully the Maroons will come out on top, obviously, but you can tell from the start, it was furious-paced game, and it's coming down to the final moments. Should be now, very exciting. Really interesting. It looks like it's going to be the Maroons starting lineup minus Griner. Nope, now in fact she's going to check on. The coaches for Chicago, five of them, head coach Chris of St. Kentucky and four assistants who we'll talk highly about later, all just drawing up the play, communicating about what they're going to do here. You imagine they're going to use the bulk of the shot clock here. The case, of course, the type of defense they play, they're going to nuisance the Maroons as much as they can, even just getting into the half-court offense. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see when Chicago decides to take that first shot, but really in sports, there's very few things more exciting than the final seconds of a very close basketball game where it comes down to one of the final shots. That's why you, you got to love sports. Case has Iacono, Aya Felice, Orca, Mummy, as well as, I believe that's Epper on. Griner to check it in. Iacono, the one in the backcourt, but she is going to backpedal as Womack carries it up for the Maroons. 26 seconds left. Maroons trail by two. Womack rushing. McGarra for three. Good! Oh, wow. The net being fixed on the <laughs> other end. That will give us a second to just gush about the shot by McGarra. She hasn't hit everyone today. But there, the big one from the corner. Chicago up by one in 20 seconds left. 14 now, right side, Iacono. Deafening stuff and a foul against the Maroons and Griner, I believe. That would be her fifth. And she's gonna foul out. Iacono will head to the line to shoot two after this de facto timeout because the fifth foul charged against Griner. 10.6 seconds on the clock. You imagine Case wouldn't want many players other than Evie Icano to be at the line to shoot these in the clutch, but Chicago, uh, barring some sort of offensive rebound for Case, will have the opportunity to respond. Yeah, very high pressure situation here for Iacono, but one of the top players for Case. You'd want her at the line. We'll see if the U Chicago fans will try and distract her with some chance or something. I imagine they will. Two timeouts left for both teams. You might see one after this first shot. Nope, there's going to be another one called by Chicago. Murray is the one going to be on for Griner, as mentioned. She fouled out with that fifth one there. 64-63, Chicago on McGarris. Huge three. Last week it was Caitlin Moore, and this week the Maroons junior, the one who can do it all. 
Great shot from McGarry. No hesitation, nothing but net. Really exciting shot. It was right in front of a bunch of U Chicago fans. They just, you know, jumped in the air, hands in the air. Very exciting play. High energy in the stadium right now. We talked about how we may have expected Chicago to really use the bulk of the time so that if they hit it, a case wouldn't have much time to respond. Uh, Chicago may have caught Case a little bit off guard. Case certainly sunk back a little bit. Anyway, enough of that. Iacono at the line with two big free throws coming. Hits the first. Tied at 64, 10.6 seconds left. And potentially a crucial rebound coming here. We'll see either that or it'll be Case with the slim lead. The second doesn't no. fall, and Magera has it. Finds Devaney, trying to get around Aya Police. Five seconds left, she puts it up, and there was a foul. A foul against Case, Aya Police. Wow. So Chicago will have two shots with 3.7 seconds left. Aya Police picks up her fourth. Timeout called by Case. Devaney flirting with the edge of pushing too hard and a turnover slash on the other end, really trying to put the team on her back and with yep. not many options and not much time, do it herself and now she's gonna have the opportunity to do it herself from the line. Yeah, I couldn't tell what the call was gonna be. I was worried that it might have been a travel, but we got a great opportunity here to get a two point lead and put all the pressure on Case with 3.7 seconds left. Aya Felice with eight steals today. She's played every minute of the game. That's amazing. And uh, there, just with a foul and a, a crucial situation, you know, you know going back, this is how it is so often in basketball, you play soccer and soccer too home teams, well road teams always complain about the, the calls the home team gets. Uh, yep. Impossible for us to really judge. We, what we do know is Case plays a really high intensity sort of defense, so they're gonna get a lot of fouls. Uh, and, and everyone can kind of make up their own mind about how it's been called so far. Either way, it's really determining on both ends of the court how this last 10 seconds is playing out. Claire Devaney and a hush, including from us, will come over the crowd. Missed it. You almost wonder sometimes if the quiet almost makes it uh, more jarring for a player. You know, I, seconds left. all eyes are on you. No good. Fight for the rebound. It's going to be Cases. And now Iacono, she's not going to get a last shot. And we're headed to overtime. A tough spot for a second year to be on, be in. And uh, I imagine, though the shots weren't off by much, that uh, couldn't help but feel the pressure either way. A fitting end to regulation. And uh, maybe most appropriately, maybe we'll see it settled in open play here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, tough, tough break there. Um, obviously, Devaney's done has had a great game. Couldn't get those to fall, but hopefully, we can get it done in overtime. Some quiet as we have this overtime break from the fans as well as the pep band. Uh, I think everyone trying to digest what was a kind of vertigo-inducing 40 minutes. Uh, that somehow managed to kind of climax at the end in, in an even more dizzying way. 64 to 64 after 40 minutes. So Evi Iacono had the opportunity to put her team up at the line after tying it. Missed it. Claire Devaney for Chicago. The leaders of this game mention Aya Police has played all 40 minutes. That's Eric Aya Police for Case. Has 10 points does have four fouls. We have to keep in mind that the foul situation carries over here. Uh, of course, Emily Mower fouled out with a few minutes left to go. 
Erica Iapolis has four fouls, and Brooke Orca has four, and we'll be seeing a lot of them on the last five. For Chicago, Ellie Greiner has fouled out. No one else with more than three fouls. And we'll have a tip-off to start overtime as we return from whence we came, all level. Though this time, Murray for Chicago in the center circle, and for Case, the substitute Mummy in the center circle. A 50-50 on the win, and a battle continuing for it. It will be I Police. Who else? Who ends up with it? You got to imagine these girls are exhausted, but you're, they're not showing it on the court, still throwing their body around. Left side, Orcutt. Right side now, Eppard. Takes it down low to the baseline. Murray holding her defense very well. 10 seconds left on the shot clock here in the first possession of overtime. Eppard inside the wing, up top. Caught by Mummy, pushes in, was short, maybe blocked, and rebounded by Devaney. Womack now at the Maroons continued to work with those long outlets to get around from Case's backcourt defense. Moore to a hopping stop. Back up to Megara. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Womack dodging around, had a good first step, found Moore for three. Off the back of the iron, rebound by Eppard. Four minutes left to play in overtime. Now, down to the block, Iacono missed it from short distance. Good defense there from Megara, forced a tough shot. Devaney now around the screen by Murray, spinning in to the back door, but no good. Case looking to throw a punch themselves, short by Aya Felice, and both these teams just really needing to get their own bearings. Yeah, they're flying down the court. They're getting to the basket, but they're not able to finish. They've had some pretty tough shots. Three and a half minutes left in overtime. Womack, 1v1. You do see the zone defense for Case lobbed into Devaney. Let's break it in one. A great pass and a great finish, even with the contact. Iacono picks up her four, so now Aya Felice with four. Iacono with four. I'm not sure if their defense or their offense will be missed more should they pick up a fifth. Either way, you imagine a player like Moore for Chicago might be trying to draw her third charge of the game. We'll see how the Maroons set up their defense after Devaney misses the free throw. It is a two-point lead for Chicago, rebounded by Case. 3.15 left in overtime. Iacono finds Miles. Right side is Mummy. Bounce to Aya Felice into the middle, skips it out. Reynolds, baseline, no good. Rebound by Devaney. Splits herself away, seeking options on her left. Didn't like him there, so she goes to her right instead. Batted out of the hands of Womack, winds up with Iacono, who's going to go for the dunk and put it in. 66-66, we're back tie with 2.40 left. That ball, by the way, after the initial touch by Icono, is Donovan doing some work, blocked and fouled. It looked like it was contact after the clean block that was called against Mummy. Yeah, it definitely looked like a clean, clean block there. But, to, but back yeah. to that steal by Icono, it looked like she might have had the steal, but then it hit off the referee's foot that was right there and stayed in play. It might have gone out otherwise. Yeah, I thought it looked like it took a weird bounce or something. I wasn't exactly sure what happened. Donovan in her return to the Ratner Athletic Center. And the Maroons line up. Now with, I believe it's eight points on the game. Six quite, an, from the line. quite an exciting game to come back for. 68-66, Chicago up, two and a half minutes left to play. Of course, in overtime now. Left side, Iacono. Remember, she has four fouls. Iacono gets it back from Mummy, puts it up, and hits it. So Iacono coming up with a big shot. She's now eight of 19 this game. Has put up the volume now after, you know, kind of a surge at the end of the game, has 19 points and seven rebounds. 
Yeah, it's quite an impressive performance. You always expect your top players to step it up when the game's on the line. She's done a great job of that. And a foul against Aya Felice right at the center circle. A look of disbelief on her face. Uh, again, impossible for us to judge mm -hmm. whether it was the right call or not, but Aya Felice herself didn't feel she did. Either way, she was flirting with the danger and she's now fouled out. The team unquestionably their most uh, impactful defensive player, if not uh, all around. Yeah, I didn't get a, a great look at that. Obviously, she did not agree with the call. Huge play, though, and hopefully the Maroons can take advantage. 2.07 left in overtime. The Maroons will shoot two. Of course, the team foul situation, the whole foul situation carries over into overtime. And Donovan, familiar territory for her at the foul stripe. Too long. The second is good. You get the feeling she has nerves of steel. Does uh, Morgan Donovan? We've seen it in her season and a half in the Maroons. White and Maroons. 69 68, two minutes left. Orcutt finds a, uh, pardon me, Iacono. Long switch, Devaney tipped it out. 16 seconds left on the shot clock. Good anticipation there from Devaney to cut out that pass. To the back door, Orcutt and one. Womack, the one with the foul. She was the defender behind. And Orcutt goes to the line to put her team up by two. Missed it. Rebound by Moore. Some key free throws missed by Case down the stretch. Haven't had many this game. Uh, Devaney now for Chicago, trailing by one with 140 left. Down to Murray, out of her reach, a tussle for it, and it will be Spartan's ball. Spartan's ball. So Case, 6 of 13 from the line on the game. Chicago, 25-33. Iacono, one of two starting seniors of their four, left standing here at this late juncture. On the left wing. The long way around, goes to Orcutt. McGarra keeping her well at the perimeter. Eight seconds on the shot clock, down low to Eppert, fouled by Murray. And the referees now hearing it from the other side. Suddenly the, uh, the referees don't seem like they're letting a lot go. Uh, there have been a lot of fouls called these last few minutes and they're definitely making their imprint on the game. Yeah, they're However, certainly Murray went for the block, and I'm one of those things where uh, her and Eppert in a really tough 1v1 battle on the blocks, and Eppert able to get two points on it this time. Three point lead for the Spartans, 106 left. A lot of eyes in the UAA on this game. Womack down to Moore, still winds up with McGarrett for three. Might have been partially blocked, was short regardless, and now Iacono surging forward. 23 second difference between shot clock and game clock. Iacono throwing it into the mix to find Miles. 40 seconds left. Timeout for Case. They just need a stop. We've been in this spot before in this game. Case looking to put this game out of reach. Chicago needing a big stop down the clutch before they have to start fouling, now trailing by three. And there's no doubt that Chicago can get that stop. They've played well defensively all game, and once they're on offense, you know that they can make that big three. They've done it tonight already. They've done it in past games. So they just need to keep it at that three-point deficit and hope for a big shot from one of their players. 37 seconds left, 14 seconds on the shot clock. Both teams with their whiteboards out. 
and familiar faces ready to come on the court. Remember the foul situation. We've been harping on it because it really has played a significant role in this game. For Case Western, they're without Emily Muller, their senior center. They're without Erica Ayafuis. She of 10 points and eight steals. Both have fouled out. Brooke Orcutt has four, and Evie Icano has four right now for Chicago. None with more than three, though Ellie Griner, their starting post, won't be returning this game. Inbounds for Case. And they're gonna find Iacono. Chicago can't foul, of course, here. Magara, however, letting the ball loose. Seven seconds now. Iacono calling for it back. She has to start again. Four seconds, three seconds. The screen set. Puts it up. Missed it. Wow. Back now. Shot clock off and 23 seconds left. Two timeouts in the Maroons' pocket, and they'll use it. This is an incredible game. At the edge of my seat all, all night. Nineteen point six seconds left. Chicago not necessarily needing a three here. Uh, the last time when they just needed a two, they went for a three. So we'll see if uh, they once again kind of counter with what's less expected in a sense. You see, as the Chicago coaching staff again, it's head coach Chris St. Kanucky along with her full-time assistant, Alex Young, and then her kind of volunteer assistant, Corey Schwanz, an excellent Maroons player, uh, graduated in 07, been in a lot of big UAA games herself, and a real X's and O's person. Lori Tanaka herself, graduated a year later, kind of part of the console right now on the coaching staff, EJ Dietrich, a volunteer for the team, and the play being put in to the Maroons five right now. Seventy two, sixty nine, Case up by three with nineteen point six seconds left in Chicago to inbounds from the sideline. The Case and Chicago men's basketball teams watching the thrilling end to this one. Omak into Devaney, reached behind herself to get it. Shot clock off, remember, 16 seconds though. Womack, wow. long three, air balled, and it's out. And now a need to foul or force something otherwise. 11.7 seconds left into Orcutt, who will walk up to shoot two, the foul by Womack. Womack picks up her fourth. Orkut today, eight points, four rebounds, four of eight shooting, did miss her only free throw at the line. And the fans trying to throw her off, but uh, with the bounce and the roll, puts her team up by four. A second good. So a five point game, Chicago needing a quick one. Finding Magara, she's gonna have to probably put it up herself, spinning, putting it up, no good. Back up by Devaney, but 2.5 seconds, a timeout called by the Chicago bench, their last use, and it's just a 30 second one uh, called it looks like. Gonna quickly talk about what they have to do here, which is steal the ball and score. Yeah. And score three. Steal the ball, kick it out. Drain a three. 74-71. Spartans up by three. With 2.5 left in overtime. Here it comes. To put it in will be Miles, the senior. Looking for an opening, she did find Orchid, who's fouled. 1.8 seconds left. 
Case did, of course, have one foul or one timeout left. Should they have had trouble, but kind of at the end of the five seconds, we're able to get it in. Womack picks up her fifth foul, and so she'll foul out now. And be replaced by Donovan. So Chicago's only chance here, a couple misses and a rebound, and then gonna have to really pull off the miracle. Probably have to take a shot from around half court if they can get that second rebound. Orkut, who hit the pair of free throws the last time up. Now, hit it. She got a couple of good bounces and smiles all around atop the blue shirts. Says they know they have this one in hand here. The second one is made as well. Five points and truly the end of this one. 76-71, your final case holding off Chicago. This game could have wound up with either team, could have gone a number of different ways. You have a feeling that whoever dropped this one was gonna feel like they had lost an opportunity. And uh, unfortunately for Chicago, it was them today, but they, uh, they showed admirable improvement in a week's time. Absolutely, they fought really well. You gotta know that they probably feel pretty bad after this one. I mean, to fight that hard and then have it just sort of slip away um, and to have that second loss against Case in you know, just that short amount of time, it's definitely a frustrating loss for them. But they can hold their heads high. They played well, they worked hard, but they just couldn't quite get it done down the stretch. Don't go anywhere, because the men's game is about to follow. More great stuff to come. We are going to wrap up this one quickly before the break. To update you on the UAA standings, the picture that's emerged now with six games left is three, uh, is basically there's a top four and a bottom four in the league. The top four comprising of Emory and Rochester at seven and one, Wash U at six and two, and then Case at five and three. So I mentioned the Spartans, the dark horse here, but really with an opportunity. And uh, Kyle, I don't know if you want to wrap up maybe some of the, the final game stats here uh, between these two teams as Case takes it by five. Yeah, the Chicago women did well um, getting to the line. They were 25 of 33 for free throws. Case was just 10 of 17. Uh, Chicago women didn't shoot great for from three, only six of 22. Case was 415, not uh, any better. Field goals, Case was 30 of 69 for 43 and a half percent. RU Chicago women were 20 of 56 at 35.7 percent. And then the final for turnovers, Case 15 turnovers, U Chicago women with 22. It was a high paced game throughout. Um, unfortunately, the U Chicago women were on the, the wrong end of the scoreboard tonight. I, I think when you talk about some of the keys for Chicago really staying in this game and dealing, uh, preventing Case from ever taking a lead larger than six, even though they trailed a lot of the game. You yeah. have to talk about the offensive rebounding. You have to talk about the getting themselves to the line. Um, yeah, they and really didn't suffer from too many bad fouls until the end of the game. Uh, and, and that's just how kind of things go as the importance of the plays increase, the importance of any single foul increases as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and rebounding has been a struggle for the, our women throughout the year, but they did a great job of it tonight. They fought well both ends on the boards. I mean, as I said, they've got nothing to hang their heads out over. It just must be a very frustrating loss to be so close and just not be able to pull it out. We could say the same thing for Case, that uh, they have a lot to look forward to and can count us as admirers of the identity they have on the court. Really runs through their seniors and a lot of different players stepped up for them today. As I mentioned, they're in fourth place, but within two games of first place, they'll have the chance to get themselves level with Wash U, trying to pull the double on the Bears, which would be an incredible accomplishment, especially going on the road. Uh, so, of course, wish them the best the rest of the way. 
Kyle and I, are you going to be with me back on Sunday? or? Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be in studio on, on Sunday. We right. will have to see, though. Well, thanks to Kyle Kerfers, uh for the great color commentary today. We've enjoyed bringing you this game. Of course, don't go anywhere. There's going to be more to come from Maroon Television with the men's game coming up next. Chicago and Case. The final in the women's game, 76 Case, 71 for Chicago. Looking forward to catching you next time. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your evening here at the Ratner Athletic Center and on Maroon Television. So long, everybody.